When I was a boy, I grew up in the Ozarks of Oklahoma. My folks were poor, and the parcel of land we lived on was allotted to my mother because of the Cherokee blood that flowed in her veins. Except for one thing, I was the happiest boy alive. But it's hard for any boy to be completely happy when he wants something so bad, it gnaws on his heart and gets all mixed up in his dreams. In the morning of my life I ran through the hills And the whippoorwill sang their songs just for me And each brand new day Was a sweet melody In the morning of my life We'd swim Playing hide and seek like the wind, wild and free. And each brand new day was a sweet melody. But now. You will come in? Right. I'm Big Kyle, and this is Mr. Bellington. This is my wife, Jenny. Howdy, ma'am. These are my daughters, Sarah, Alice. We're up from Tulsa. Tulsa? We got kinfolk live up there. Your Uncle Fred, he's the one that sent us out here. Said you had the best coon hunting in the Ozark. Hear that, Jenny? Uncle Fred sent him. How's he getting on? Feeding grain business doing right good. 
He was talking about selling out and going back to Vermont. We heard about that. We're hoping to make him a fair offer for his business someday. Hope you can do it. It sure would be a fine thing for a family like yours. You stay for supper. It's mighty kind of you, ma'am. But if we're going to get any hunt done, we got to get camp set up for dark. There's a nice spot just down the river called Dripping Springs. This wagon road will take you right by it. With hounds like these, you're bound to catch a pass full of coons. Mr. Bellington bred them hounds himself. They're sure fine ones, mister. Thank you. They're champions. Won the coon hunting competition three years running. That right? Got any hunting dogs your own, son? No, sir. Ain't that a shame? All this fine hunting and no dogs. Yes, sir. We better get going, Kyle. It's getting late. Sure enough, Mr. Belling. My nice meeting you folks. I'll say hi to you, Uncle Fred. We'd be mighty pleased if you would. I've never seen anyone hunger after anything where that boy did after them dogs. Well, I just don't want him out nights hunting with hounds. I mean, it's bad enough having him prowl on the riverbeds in the daytime. He's a boy, Jenny. The boy ought to have a dog. And you ought to have a new mule. I know, but I can't help wanting it for him. Country bred Jenny like me. A boy living in these hills just ought to naturally have a dog. Billy? Yes, Papa? I was up at Grandpa's store yesterday. He, he told me old man Stanton's collie's about to have pups. I thought maybe we could... Papa, I don't want any old collie dog. I want hunting dogs. I know what you want, son. But hunting dogs cost money, and that's something we don't have very much of. Well, right now, there's a blue tick pup for sale in front of Grandpa's store for $35. There he is. Can I go see him? Did you hear what I said, boy? $35. Well, I can at least go look at him, can I? Please, Papa. Well, I guess it ain't gonna hurt nothing. But listen, you be back here at noon. You gotta fix that fence down on the south end. I don't know. Thirty-five dollars is a hell of a lot to pay for a dog like that. He ain't worth more than twenty, Paul. Not even that much. Don't like the price you talk to Jed Parker. It's his hound. I'm just trying to sell it for him. Hey, Billy. <laughs> oh, well, we'll take it. That ain't no $35 dog, but I promise those boys a dog, and I'm going to get them one, even if it's a poor one. It was five and 25 and 35. Come on, boys, let's get the house. I sure have seen better dogs in my day. It'll be hard when we'll make something out of him. Yeah. Makes me mad, folks like that getting such a fine hound. As sure as I'm alive, it'll wind up being as mean as they are. Sure would like to bought it for you, Billy. I ain't much better off than your pa. Oh, shucks, you'll have your own hounds before long. I don't know, Grandpa. Sometimes I think God don't want me to have any. 
that so? Why? Well, I've been asking him for dogs as long as I can remember. Nothing's happened yet. It could be that you ain't doing your fair share. Well, what do you mean? Well, if God was a mind to get your dogs as slick as cutting lard, he'd be doing all the work. That wouldn't be good for your character. I don't want character. I want dogs. You want dogs bad enough, Billy, you're gonna get dogs. But you want his help, you're gonna have to meet him halfway. What does that mean? What does that mean? What do you think about it? didn't understand what Grandpa was trying to say to me in the store that day. But as a month passed, I thought a lot about what he meant by meeting God halfway. And I was willing to do anything to get myself some hounds. I was just plain tired of all the heartache. Slowly, a plan began to form. I'd earned the money myself. The more I planned, the more real it became. And out of the clear blue sky, I realized what my grandpa had meant. My share was to do the work. And God's share was to give me the heart, courage, and determination. So all through the following season, I worked at about every odd job that it was possible for a 12-year-old boy living in the Ozarks to do. Papa wondered where I found the energy to work at the jobs I had found and still do my chores at home. I didn't tell him I was saving for hounds because I knew he could use another mule. Many times I got discouraged because it seemed like it would take forever for me to earn enough money to buy the hounds I had seen advertised. But when I went to bed at night, I could see puppies, feel puppies, smell puppies and even dream about puppies. That was enough to keep me going. When well, blazes did you get all that? I saved it, Grandpa, so I can buy two hound pups. You order them for me? Well, how, how long you been saving this? A long time. I did what you said, Grandpa. You know, about meeting God halfway. He's the one that helped me. Well, does your papa know you got all this? Grandpa? Papa needs a new mule real bad. But I want those dogs real bad, too. Been wrestling this problem for some time, ain't you? I'm doing right, Grandpa. Oh, Billy. There ain't no person on this earth got a right to make that decision. Except you. When one side wrestles the other side, only one side can win. Billy, that's your money. You earned it. You worked hard. You want them dogs? You gonna get them dogs. Be damn. Be damn. I don't remember much about those weeks of waiting, except how sick and nervous I felt. I couldn't eat or sleep, and Mama was real worried. Hello, sir. 
done. Honey, you want me to help with that beef? That's all right, I can get it. I just brought that cordwood by Grandpa's. Said he had something for you. So I'll fill in the steam and you might drop by it. Talk to Jim Hedges. He's going in on Saturday. Be glad to take you. Saturday? Yeah, now, look here. You just chew on one of these and stand on your head and, well, it'll calm your nerves. Oh, wait a minute. I believe this might help soon. Ten dollars? What's that for? The price of everything's going down these days, including hounds. That's your change. Oh, week. <laughs> You've waited all this time. Now, surely a few more days ain't gonna hurt. Tell us how this means love. It's a red fern, Mama. Red fern? What's that got to do with love? Alice, do you mean to tell me you've forgotten the old Indian legend about the red fern? Well, that's a symbol of the strongest kind of love. Remember, Alice, how the little Indian boy and girl were lost in a blizzard and froze to death? And the next spring, when they were found, a beautiful red fern was growing between their bodies. I didn't know you knew that story so well. Grandpa tells it to me all the time, and I believe it, too. Come on. It's getting late. It's time for bed. Billy, I want you to finish the song.
Sonny? Yes, sir. Can you tell me where the depot station is? Right over yonder, across the tracks. Thank you, sir. Sure is a hot day today. Yes, sir. Sure is. Might be fixing the rain, too. We've had a lot of rain up where I come from. Oh, where's that? Up the river ways. You know, I got a crate in the baggage room back there making some strange noises for a boy lives up the river. The name is Billy Coleman. Ever heard of him? Yes, sir. That's me. I thought it might be. Come on, get back here. Well, here they are. What do you think of
one for dog ransom. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody ought to call the FBI. Yeah. You can tell Wick Hop, public enemy dog napper number one. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's mine, let me buy. Hey, this guy's trying to escape. Private dog. I got him. <laughs> Don't do that again. Don't touch my dogs again. Come on, Lonnie, go! Son? Yes, sir. I wouldn't have fought him, but the devil and the dogs. Hey, those sure are fine-looking dogs. Where'd you get them? From a dog kennel in Kentucky. They cost me $40. You paid for them yourself? Yes, sir. Hey, you must have cleaned a lot of hog pens. Got a lot of cordwood to save up that much. I sure did. $40? Well, there ain't a kid in that bunch with that kind of grit. Say, what's your name, son? Billy, sir. Billy Coleman. Is there a store in town that sells things like overalls and candy with the mushy centers? Right away on there. You going shopping, huh? I got ten dollars left over, and I figured there's some things my family might like. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll tote half that load, and you tote the other half, huh? <laughs> best coon hounds in these Ozark hills.
here. Doggone, she already knows her name. Saxon. Dogs, Papa. Hounds. I've been to Tahlequah to fetch him. I know Grandpa told us, so it wasn't hard to figure out where you went. Are they your dogs, Billy? Billy, is that the secret? Hey, Grandpa. Yeah, Grandpa. Why didn't you tell us, Billy? I should have. But I was afraid you wouldn't let me go. What's this other stuff, Billy? Billy, is this my treat? I can't tell you why. The sack's for you and Alice. Wait! They're fine hounds, son. I figure they'll do. This is for you, Papa. Well, well thank you, son. Well, now, Jenny, looky here. And just in time, too, son. My old overalls are barely keeping me in and the breeze out. Oh, by golly. Jenny, you've been wanting a new dress. Looks like enough material to make a dozen. You like it, Mama? Colors all right? Thank you, Billy. It's 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 perfect. Yes, son, thank you. That was mighty thoughtful. Thank you for the candy, too, Billy. Thank you, Billy. Say that just fits them both. What do you think, Jenny? Well, I think it's about time the boy had a decent meal. If I could only go back again to the places where I have been, feeling love.
smokehouse if you think you and them dogs can cover it. It's not hardly big enough, is it? <laughs> what are you going to do with all your money? Well, you've been saying we could use another mule. Well, I want you to be very careful with this axe, son. Put a fine edge on it, but it's for cutting down trees with coons in it, and that's all. Sure, Papa. Thank you. Sure enough. Here's the biscuits and some hard boiled eggs. You're going to get hungry. Mom, no need for you to worry. I'll be all right. Here. Put this on. I just don't understand why you have to do your hunting at night. Because that's when coons are up and around. Well, Billy, you better get going. They'll be stirring soon. Good luck, son. I'll be looking for a big coon skin on the smokehouse wall in the morning. this way. You'll never be a coon hound. Now get going. Oh! 
Billy. Billy. Oh, Billy, I thought you'd had an accident. I, I've just been worried sick. I could come home, Mama. My dog's had to coon up this tree. Hey, sure, I picked a big sycamore. The one the whole river That's all right. They figure they come the harder they fall. Well, there's no sense chopping down a tree like this just for one coon. Come on, Billy, we gotta go. I can't, Papa. Why not? I made a bargain with my dogs. I told them if they'd put one up a tree, I'd do the rest. They did their part, and it's up to me to do mine. Well, you're quitting, and that's that, so come on. Let's go. Do I have to whip you on top of all the punishment you already brought on yourself? Do I? Yes, ma'am. Man can't keep his word, Jenny. He's not much good, especially to himself. I say amen to that, Jenny. Look at those hands. You gonna chop down a tree like this, Billy? You need a man-sized axe. Here's my gloves. Thank you, Papa. Before you, uh, swing that axe, I want you to eat these two eggs. You can, uh, share the biscuits with the hands. You know, Billy, I believe every boy ought to have a tree like this to chop down. At least once in his life. fair share, God. Can't you just help me a little? Mama made me a cap out of that first coon hide. And she said afterwards that she wished she hadn't have made it for me. Because in some way it affected my mind. And I became completely coon crazy. By the time the second season came around, my dog's fame had spread all over the Ozarks. No coon hunter came into Grandpa's store with as many skins as I did. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Oh, 
old Dan. Come on. Is he up there? He's up there, all right. What are you coming back down for? Chase him out so your dogs can get him. No, I don't want him killed. Are you crazy or something? What's the matter with you? That's a ghost coon. I don't care. Up until now, he's outsmarted every coon hound in these hills. I just can't kill him. Get out of my way. I'll poke him out. I won't let my dogs kill him. Feed him up, Reuben. Bloody his nose. Feed him up, Reuben. <laughs> Something's moving in the brush across the creek. Maybe it's a mountain lion. Let's get out of here. Shut up. It ain't no mountain lion. Look. It's all blue. There's your mountain lion. How did he get loose? Dan! 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 You better get a hold of him. There's gonna be a fight. I ain't worried about old Blue. He can take care of himself. Yeah, and he'll take care of that old ghost coon, too. Just give me back the two dollars and I'll go home. I don't have to stand and watch it. Don't give it to him, Reuben. He ain't one of the best. He ain't killed the old ghost coon. The bet was that my dogs could trim. him. They've done that. Now give me the two dollars. What are you gonna do if we don't? Go cry to your grandpappy? I don't want to fight you, but I will if you don't give it to me. Fight, Dad. We don't want to fight you. We better give him his two dollars. What? Give him the dollar. the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me 
in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Anyone's at fault, it's me. I was a stupid fool to call that boy's bet. It was purely an accident. Nobody's at fault. Mama, you can stop worrying, because I ain't never going to go hunting again. Yep. I got an idea that we're going to something more than just a Sunday dinner. What else could it be? I don't know. But knowing your daddy, it's, it's something. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, another uh, piece no. of pie. Oh, come well, on. No, uh, no. Uh, don't. Well, how about you? Kids, how about some more pie? More pieces. How about some more ham? Oh, ham. Grandpa, what are Sweet you Sweet potatoes? Oh, oh no, come on. Now you're eating enough to keep a oh. bug alive. I'm going to have to throw it in the oh. creek. Papa, we are stuffed. All right, Grandpa, let's have it. What's on your mind? Mine? What would I have on my mind? Well, now, you must have had some purpose for laying out a speed like this. Well, I did. I want Jenny to get out of her kitchen and sample some of my food. Papa, will you stop your teasing? Now, you got something up your sleeve, and what is it? I got nothing up my sleeve. I got something in my pocket. Billy, read it. What does it say? Championship coon hunt to be held. I always wanted to be a part of one of them big coon hunts, and this is our opportunity. We can enter little Ann and old Dad. I told you, Grandpa, I ain't never gonna hunt again. Oh, I didn't say it's gonna enter you, Billy. I said it's gonna enter the dogs. Billy, them dogs got a right to prove they're the best coon hounds in the whole state of Oklahoma. Not to mention Arkansas. Can all the dogs around here be in the championship, Grandpa? Not all the dogs, Missy. The best. They got to prove they're coon hunting marbles. Well, I got a record of every coon at Billy's Dog Street, and I had to take down to the courthouse to old H.B. McCullen. He had to notarize an affidavit. All right, Grandpa. That's enough. Enough? The dogs belong to Billy. He worked for them. It's got to be Billy's decision. That wasn't a very good thing to do, Billy. Sarah? Alice? Are you sure you wouldn't like to have another piece of Grandpa's delicious? Um, I think I'll have one more of those. No, no, quit. You've had three sweaters already. Grandpa, can I take a piece home for Papa's milk? Sure, that's what you're doing. Yes, darling. You surely can. There we go. How about you, Jenny? I'll have a little. Thank you. All right, fine. I'll do it. What? 
I'll do it. Billy, are you sure? Mama, Grandpa's right. Dan and Ann are the best. They have the right to prove it. try to fight every boy in town at the same time. Don't tell me these are the same pups. They sure are. They sure turned into fine-looking hounds. Thank you. Grandpa, Pop, this is Sheriff I told you about from Tahlequah. Pleasure, Sheriff. Pleasure. Howdy, Sheriff. Hope my boy didn't cause your town too much trouble. Uh, well, nothing we didn't recover from. The Sheriff, uh, you saying something about a cash pool? Oh, yeah. Each contestant puts up $2, and the winner gets to keep it. Along with a gold cup. Two dollars. Hey, right, well, we can go along with that. It's like finding money. Two dollars. In the name of Coleman. Coleman. I suggest you folks get settled as soon as you can. Gonna have the drawings in about 30 minutes. Drawn? We can't have all the hunters going out the same night, so we gotta split them up into three nights. And we're gonna have the draw to see which night who goes out with who. Well, we better get our camp set up here, Billy. Yeah. Are you going to be a judge, Sheriff? <laughs> you might say that. Well, I got some more collecting to do, so I'll see you all later to get together tonight. Seven coons in one night, Mr. Hatfield. Bill, ain't your grandpa pulling my leg? <laughs> well, maybe just a little. <laughs> now, wait a singing now. Sounds like somebody's on one already. Well, howdy, folks. Hey, Mr. Kyle. Mr. This is our grandpa. Pleasure. You remember howdy. my boy, don't you? Uh, sure do. Them your dogs, son? Yes, sir. I knew you'd get some dogs one day, but I didn't figure there'd be such fine ones. What night you draw? Third. Say, you're in luck. We do the second. What do you mean, luck? Why, Mr. Billington's got his hounds in the best shape ever, and they're spoiling to go. Well, you better tell Billington not to polish that award until he's got it in his hand. These hounds are fixing to smell out every coon from here to Arkansas. Attention. Let me have your attention. Like I say on the radio news, 
Here's a special bulletin. A Carl Brown's hounds have treed the first coup to the contest not ten minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're tracking their second. Well, it looks like old Carl's gonna beat you folks before you even get started. Oh. 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 Yeah, Grandpa? That fella's almost got two coons already. Well, don't go losing before you've even started. I don't know, though, Grandpa. There's some mighty fine hounds there. I know, but you're gonna lick them, Billy. You're gonna lick them. Oh. My dogs worked together with a skill that was uncanny that first night. I felt certain we would make the final. <laughs> All right, give me your attention. Give me your attention, everybody. Now, the eliminations are over, and, and, and the hunters are going to compete in the finals are Sam Bellington, yeah. Carl Brown, yeah. and Billy Coleman. Yeah. Sunday. Now, the hounds that bring back the most coonskins by morning is going to get the gold cup. Not to mention the cash pool. Yeah. 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 All right, now, it's going to be a big night. So you contestants best rest your dogs and yourselves. All right, that's it. Good luck to you. <laughs> Yeah, these, these dogs are raring to go. Good luck, Mr. Billington. Well, thank you, young man. But I'm not relying on luck. I'm relying on the best pair of hounds I ever owned. Let's feed them, Cobb. Sure thing, Mr. Billington. Come on, dog. Come on, Billy. Let's get some breakfast and sleep. It's going to be a long night for all of us. We're going to need our rest. Let's go. Come on, Billy. Look good up there. It looks like a storm coming. Yeah, I believe it's gonna be a cold one, too. We're in luck! Huh? It was all gamesters just before a storm. Oh. Well, what are you waiting for? Boy, that wind is 
shrivel up, that sound could be coming from anywhere. Off in that direction. exciting hunt I ever been on. I say amen to that. Where's Billy? I thought he was here.
about ready to give out the trophy, Billy. You coming? I just do not go over, Papa. All right. That's the way you feel about it. I'll not be telling you any different. You're a man, Billy. You proved that last night. And the Acme Feed Company. Yeah. 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 Now, now we've come to the moment we've all been waiting for. Presentation of this beautiful gold cup. Now, I declare the winner of the 20th Annual 7th District Coon Hunt to be Sam Bellington. Sam? Thank you, young man. That was a sportsmanlike thing for you to do. I know how you feel about winning this cup, because I know how you feel about your dogs. Now, his dogs treed three coons, and he had to give up and go find his grandfather. Now, those hounds might have got those three coons, and then again, they might not have. But that's not the point. The point is, I don't want my dogs winning a championship that wasn't theirs clear. I declare Billy Coleman and his fine pair of red bones the champions and winners of the Gold Cup. How about that? Take it, son. You won it fair. next year because me and my walkers are going to beat the britches off of you in them red bones. <laughs> <laughs> the cash pool. Jenny, there it is. The full amount you've been praying for. Enough money to move us lock, stock, and barrel of Tulsa and take over Uncle Fred's feed business. Yeah, I figure we'll be able to go over spring. You're, uh, you're not having second thoughts, are you? About leaving? Well, how are we going to be able to tell him? I mean, we can't take these dogs from these hills and what they've been bred to do. It'd be like putting a man in prison for the rest of his life. And it'd break Billy's heart to leave him behind. Well, there's always Grandpa. What's Grandpa got to do with it? Billy and the dogs, they could stay with Grandpa for a while. Besides, he could use some help over the store anyway. And separate our family? <laughs> I'm not going to hear of that. The winning of the Gold Cup brought me and my dogs even closer than before. We became an inseparable team. And although I'd always known their love for me was great, I never realized how deep it went until the night of their greatest sacrifice as we hunted together in the Cyclone Timber Country. What do you see up there? I don't see anything.
get me some more water, Will? Mama? We'll be all right. Willie. He's hurt pretty bad, Billy. He saved my life. Lion tried to get to me. We're doing what we can, son. It was hard to make myself believe that old Dan was dead. The pain was almost more than I could stand. But as the days went by, I began to feel grateful that I still had my little Ann. Come on, little girl. Please eat. The life seems to have just gone out of me. Not in the barn, Billy. Look in the house. I've already looked there. Why did I have to lose you too, little girl? I prayed for both of my dogs. Now both of my dogs are dead. Your mother's had some prayers too, son. Now because of your dogs. And prayers have been answered. Really? Your father and I knew how hard it would be to separate you from your dogs. Why, we even thought about maybe uh, leaving you with your grandpa for a while. 
But I guess the Lord doesn't like to see family split up. Well, I guess we better get started fixing a proper resting box for God made him for all good dogs? I'm sure he did, son. Only it's much more beautiful than it is here. I'm supposed to be there. Well, I was here first. I don't want to hear any more of that. I want you to sit just where I told you. That's everything, Papa. All right. Papa, can I go down the river for just a few minutes? All right, son. But don't be long. We got to get going. Strong, Billy. I've never been back to the Ozarks. All I have left are my dreams and memories. But someday, if God is willing, I'd like to go back and walk again in the hills I knew as a boy. And I'd like to touch the heart that's carved in an old sycamore tree that says Dan and Ann. And I'll look for that sacred spot by the river where the red fern grows.